I believe it's basically what it says is whatever you say with your mouth, you will have if you believe in your heart. Now, if you're walking in the spirit, you're going to be not going against the things of what God wants. But but when we just look at that as as we got to find a scripture verse for something, if I'm looking to buy the blue car or the red car, you're not going to find it in the Bible. <laughs> yeah, but, 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 but God would drive an American car. Ford God so love the world. Ford God so love the world. Yeah. So, and I don't know why it wasn't condemnation, it was conviction that we got to, we walk by what we say, and I'll get into that even a little bit here. In, in the, if we always talk negative, we're going to reap negative. If we always talk positive, we're going to walk. So if you don't like the walk you're in, change your speaking. Right. And, and the people that are out there teaching positive confession and all this stuff, they're biblical. They might not be Christians or saved, but there's a lot of the principles in the Bible that work, that, that work whether you're saved or not, because it's the word of God. And if you walk in that doesn't mean you're saved, you're not going to be saved necessarily. But uh, there's principles just like giving. I mean, if you're a giver, you're going to receive whether you're saved or not. These are principles that are set up in the kingdom, I believe, here on this. this earth. So I really felt convicted that I stressed that way too much because it makes me feel better because it it makes me feel like it's uh it kind of re takes the pressure off of me and as i so you know do you know what i'm trying to say i'm not doing a very good job of what i'm trying to say i realize that but but it's uh it's He, I mean, you can you can go to a lot of things. The Bible says he will supply all your needs according to riches and glory. So if you're things you need and you speak for it and all this, you can claim it, you know, and stand on on his word for it. But mm -hmm. I just felt like he mm -hmm. just really came down on me. Like I didn't say that. He said, whosoever will say to this mountain, be thou removed. He didn't say if the Bible says you're supposed to remove that mountain. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like we need to, you know, it, the, the things that we, we need to speak and put into effect, we need to do it. When God told me there was going to be a church for me here in Plain City, uh, I didn't go out and demand it. I tried to find in the Bible where it says that David Yoder is supposed to go start a church. Some, you know, whatever. I mean, it's there in general that we're supposed to go out and expand and whatever. But, but uh, I kept repeating it and saying it. And 18 years later, this church started. And it wasn't that I was trying to start it, wasn't that I was pushing for it, never really wanted to be a pastor, never expected to be a pastor. And, you know, so, but for the last over 20 years, I've been a pastor. You know, the Bible says that he wants us to be obedient and willing. I've always feels like I've been obedient, but I don't know about the willing part, but I want to be willing, you know, to do, and I have been willing to do it because it's like, it's like I have, I've been obedient. So. I wanted to get that off my chest because it, it just really came hard. I mean, I, I went to bed after the service two weeks ago and it's like, I just felt like, man, I sold that short. It's a lot more than just what, what we were saying. So forgiveness, hopefully. Nope. Okay. You guys aren't going to forgive me. <laughs> Thank you. Hallelujah. I know he has. I've asked for forgiveness for, for doing that. Uh, we just really need to watch our mouths, what we speak. That's why I put a mouth up there. Fight the fight. Now, I didn't finish the whole verse because the next verse is fight the good fight of faith. Now, I thought I was done with faith messages. Last time I talked about faith, I said, no, this will be the end of it. I think I went four of them. Here's another one. Uh, not specifically, actually, this one should have been first, I think, but uh, it's not, it's not. Yeah, I can do this one and then go back and preach all th the other three and four again. So, but when you see this verse, what do you think? Fight the good fight of faith. We're going to go out and we're just going to tear up the devil, right? We're going to, we're going to defeat him. We're going to, we're going to just mow him down and do all this kind of stuff stuff that's what that's what i think i want to think of fight you know some people think you fight your fellow man your christian brother and sister uh fight or you fight other denominations and all this stuff no you fight 
your, uh, the fight is with your faith. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. So we have to have faith in God, which is his word. And we walk in it. And we, we were singing all these songs up here, but, you know, warrior and, and all these kinds of things. If you know who you are in Christ, you will be able to go out and war and fight the fight of faith. And it's and it's the fight basically is in this thing. And yes, I called myself a thing. That's where the problem rises most generally. It's not everybody out there and all this kind of stuff. It's it's us and we found the enemy and the enemy wants to rise up in us and we can't. But just just uh, for me, it would have been fight the good fight it means, you know, you just because it's something that I can do in the physical, in the natural, and I feel like I'm getting something done. Right? Because you're a doer. Yes. But we're supposed to be doers of the word and not hearers only. Yes. So you guys have to go out and do whatever I say here today, according to the word of God. So in Luke 18, 8, he says, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? He didn't say, shall I find Christians on the earth? Although believers, which would be faith, believers would be Christians. But he, he says that, will I find faith? That tells me faith is very, very important. To operate in his kingdom, we operate by faith. Same as they did in the Old Testament, they operated by faith. And the reason they didn't enter in was because they didn't operate in faith. They didn't mix their faith with what they did. And we can do it. It's the same today. Uh, but, it, but I like in the Old Testament, he says that he would fight for them, that they don't actually have to fight. They have to walk things out, but he's the one that does the fighting. Exodus 14, 14, he says, the Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. See, sometimes we get wrapped up in fighting instead of just allowing God to operate and do the things that he wants to do. Hallelujah for that. But if you see, you know, he says, I will, I will fight your fight. Well, when they came to Jericho, he told them what to do. So they didn't just sit back and said, you told us to just not do anything. So we're not going to go out and go around Jer Jericho. But no, you still follow after what God says to do. So they went out and they went around Jericho seven times. The seventh time they went around seven times and blew the shofars and the walls came straight down. When we were in Israel, they told us that the walls didn't fall down this way. They went straight down and they went in and because uh, they said, if you dig down, it's the walls down in there. So. Uh, so they still had to do something, even though he said, I will fight your battle. He says the same thing to do to, to us today, that, that we need to, to rest in his peace and just do as he says and let him fight the battle for us. So as we fight the good fight of faith, uh, he, doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't say, will I find Christians? I said that before. Will I find Christians on the earth? He says, will I find faith? Because faith is where it's at. It's where we're at. Hallelujah. Habakkuk 2.4, going back to the foundation of our Christianity. Habakkuk 2.4, behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. He's talking about the person who's proud. And I have to always ask for forgiveness for pride after I hear my grandkids up here playing and singing. <laughs> so it's always, a, I, I, have to, I have to ask for forgiveness. Hallelujah. But he says, but the just shall live by faith. That's the Old Testament, all right? The just shall live by faith. That's how it was back then. It wasn't just following the law. It wasn't following the commandments. It wasn't doing all that stuff because you can do all that stuff and still not enter his rest because you don't, you're not coming in through faith. Romans 1.17, the commentary. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So how are you living? So we live by faith. Hallelujah. <laughs> Smith Wigglesworth's def definition of faith is acting on God's word. 
You could also say fighting for God's word. And see the fighting there, if you thought right away about, oh, we're going to go get them. That's not the kind that I'm talking about. We're fighting faith for us to walk and, and uphold the things that the word of God gives us. Hallelujah. I want the peace that passes all understanding to guard my heart. Hallelujah. Hosanna 4.6. Hosea 4.6. <laughs> Hosanna. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. So the more we know, the better off we are as to, as to how he operates and how the kingdom operates. Hallelujah. So this morning I want to look at a few of the hindrances that would keep us from faith. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All things. So when you became a new creation in Christ, the old things have passed away. What are the old things? Yeah, the old nature, the what you want. Now, now the, the, the outer man still might want to do some of the things that you did before, but the inner man is what's got born again. The way you see things and you think about things, there's an mm -hmm. old way and a new way. The new way is through Lord's Spirit, the old, the old way is through man. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Anybody that's born again that was out in the world, well, we were all out in the world. Uh, when you get born again, it's like you. Be, it's like a new. It's a whole new world out there. Because, yeah. pardon? Did they receive a new heart? Yeah. Or the spirit. Yeah. The, the spirit is what is renewed. It's it's your spirit man that had died when Adam and Eve sinned. The connection, the Wi-Fi was shut down between the two. At that point. That's what you know. Even like people always look. Like when you say, at an older age, you have friends that are that see the change and. And they're like, well, why do you have to get rid of all your, you know, 300 cassettes? And what do I have to? I want to because I see things. It's just I don't. Right. Exactly. It's, it's a heart thing. Yeah. Exactly. You don't desire that. Exactly. Yeah. You don't want. We did. We destroyed quite a few stuff when yeah. when we got exactly. saved. You just become aware and you want to. We even we even got rid of our four way water bomb. Wow, that's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, that means that means that we really got saved yeah. right your friends don't get it because they're still you know, right we didn't give it to anybody we threw it away same as we wiped out an Indian and not that Indians are bad or whatever but we she felt like that thing kept staring at us as if it was speaking to us and so oh, we we just took that thing out and pointed and she had made it uh, out of ceramic yeah painting that so it's like yeah you become a new person I mean, and i've said this many times I, I drove down the street and i look at an old pear tree and you know a pear tree is not the prettiest tree that's out there i mean it's usually you know in around and i looked at that and it's like that is beautiful my god my father made that i was like i've seen that thing in my whole life i lived here my whole life so it's like you know driving back through there and then after that it's like even the pear tree looked like a new i became a new creation in christ jesus and we have to remember we were made a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And what else does it say? Yeah, all things are become new. The old nature is gone. But the inner man is what became new. The spirit man was renewed. It was brought back. It's like you turn the Wi-Fi on again. I like that because people understand Wi-Fi nowadays. So you, you, there's a connection. <laughs> people come in church and, what's the wi-fi here you know it's like we should have made it yeshua uh, or something anyway did you receive a new body when you were born again you might have received healing or you might have had some of this stuff but the outer body is is or the the out, outward man is where our struggle is was not anymore I've been teaching on faith, man. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it would have been nice to get a new body outside, but we did not. So everything in your past was wiped away. Everything. 
Everything before you got saved, got born again, is gone. It's done. Don't let the enemy bring it back up. That's a big thing the enemy keeps trying to do is bring your past back. Because when you feel condemned or feel you have a hard time releasing faith to receive something because you feel condemnation about stuff. And, and the devil is the one that brings condemnation. God brings conviction. And so, so when you feel heavy or feel, you know, like... Like two weeks ago, after I got done, I went over and laid down. And I had this feeling on me. I, I, I didn't have much faith for anything because I felt I left him down be, and he was getting on me about, why are you making this different than what I made it? I'm selling it. I was selling it short by emphasizing something because it made me feel better in doing that because it felt like it released some of the pressure on us of of operating in that place. And, and a lot of people think, well, that's not really, that's more new age, that's this and that, no, it's Bible. And it's what Jesus said, he was radical. You look at some of the stuff he said, he was radical. He, he said he wants us to be with him as he is with God. That's radical. He said, whatever you say with your mouth, if you say to this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea and believe in your heart, it, it's, it will happen. You will have whatever you say. That's radical. I mean, you teach that in some churches, it's like they'll probably kick you out. It's like, that doesn't work. I tried it and it doesn't work. But it's Bible. Has it always worked for me that way? No. Because my faith needs to be built up. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. It's not just listening to say, it's the word of God that makes the difference. Hallelujah. But when you become born again, it's like your past is wiped away. Don't let the enemy bring up anything from your past and say, you know, because of what you did before you were born again, you know, you can't really receive that. He wouldn't heal you. He wouldn't do this to you because of what you did. No, God has wiped it all away. He doesn't even know about it anymore. The devil knows what you've done because he keeps trying to put it back on you and you say get thee behind me satan it is written he's blotted out all my sins and he remembers them no more hallelujah thank you we rise above it in isaiah 43 25 i even i who's i jehovah and he am he that blotteth out thy transgressions this is interesting for mine own sake and will not remember thy sins anymore. So why does he blot out your sins for his sake? Because when he looks at you, he wants to see you as righteous and not with sin on you. He takes them totally away from you. So he says, he do, I do it for my sake, to cleanse you. Hallelujah. That's Isaiah. Hebrews 8, 12. For I will, mercifully to their, I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. And their sins and their iniquities, there's, I will remember no more. So if he doesn't remember it anymore, why should we allow anybody else to bring it up? Right? We walk in his righteousness. We are now his. We have been totally cleansed. But he wants you to think, to take you back there so that you don't receive the benefits that he paid the price for you to have. It's a simple message, but we need to hear it sometimes as to who we are in him. And any sins we commit after we're born again, this is the same thing. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He's saying this to the saints. If we confess our sins, he will forgive us. I remember one time when uh, Alex and Lindsay were here and I was, they wanted their baby dedicated. And I remember, I think it was Saturday, I was mowing or something. Somebody had a bike in the wrong place and I just got off the mower, just blew up. It's like, I just grabbed that bike and threw it as hard as I could. I mean, I was angry. I don't know what, I don't know if, uh, what was going on, but I've been known to have a short fuse sometimes. I don't, I don't remember if I don't remember his I don't know if it's Jesse's or Elijah's or or probably Janine's 
Brother Janine's three wheeler. Yeah. And and <laughs> and see. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it's like I did it and I got back on the mower and I thought, that was stupid. You know, I let my my outer man got the better of the inner man. And I've repented right there. I, I just said, God, forgive me. You know, that was not the right thing. And when I came in, and one of the reasons that made me do that was because I was thinking, I'm doing a baby dedication the next day. I don't want that on me. And I actually talked to that. When we got to church, I talked to Alex and Lindsay, and I told them that I, I, got, I lost my temper, and I asked for forgiveness. And I said, I, I said uh, will you forgive me too? I said, I don't want to put anything on your kid. You know, I mean, these things can be transferred. I mean, we might not think about it, all the things that can happen, but I didn't want any of that on me. And so I asked them and I said, do you still want me to go ahead and dedicate? Oh yeah. Why? Because I believe they understood that if we confess our sins, that he was faithful and just. So it was like God was looking at me again as if I'd never sinned. It's just that simple. But why is it so hard sometimes? God deals with us for a while before we yield. Then after we yield, we feel so much better. Why don't we just yield right to start with and ask for forgiveness and then go on instead of fighting it for a while, like the permit for out here? I mean, I fought that thing. I did not want anything to do with it because what's happening now is why I didn't, <laughs> didn't want it. I'm sitting there waiting. So anyhow, we, we another another time when I'm obedient, but not willingly. But anyway, praise God. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There's no reason to feel like you're not righteous. Okay. So why am I going here? When the devil brings up things that are in your past because you know the Bible, where your faith is based, you tell him he was been defeated and get thee behind me. You know, I'm reminded of, and I think I said this before here, where the pastor's wife would kept going out shopping, buying dresses all the time. And uh, his, he told her, he said, well, quit buying all these dresses. What's, what, why are you buying all these? You got more dresses than you can wear. And she said, well, the devil makes me do it. <laughs> and he goes, really? He says, you tell the devil to get thee behind me. And he, he will flee from you. So a few days later, she comes home with a couple of boxes of dresses again. And he goes, I told you to tell the devil to get ye behind me and, and uh, to resist him and he will go away. He said, she said, I did. He told me the dress looks good from the backside too. <laughs> <laughs> so you might need to tell him how far to get how far to get when you resist him and tell him to get out of here but the bible says he will flee and if you study out that flee you can come to where you, he flees in terror because he understands you understand the word and you understand what where your position is in him hallelujah so our fight is with faith. Do we really believe what the Bible says or not? Another thing, but related to just knowing where we stand, it's related. It's the word righteousness for our right standing with God. James 5 says, confess your faults one to another. Everybody knows this verse, can probably repeat it by heart. Pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth brought forth fruit. Now, why does he talk about Elijah after this, talking about a righteous man? The Elijah... Uh, right after he slays the 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 uh, the I love to say thing is Babel, the Baal prophets of Baal. He slayed them. Jezebel says, "I'm going to kill him. I'm going to do to him what he did to these priests." And uh, he's scared and he runs away. And then he says, "Oh God, take my life! Take my life! I'm I'm the only one left." And it's like 
He's a man such as you and I are. He did a great thing for God or whatever, and then the devil got on, got after him. And uh, instead of just stopping, and uh, it's easy for me to say Jezebel's not trying to take my head off, but he, instead of stopping and saying in the name of Jesus, well, wouldn't have had the name of Jesus back then, but in the name of God, you know, I can find it, you know, I'm not, she's not getting me, right? I'm protected by God. I, I, I walk in him, I'm doing his bidding. But instead he went and, and hid and, and, uh, because he was afraid, because he was a man such as you and I are, but yet he was righteous, right? The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. How many times when you've read that, you think in yourself, am I righteous enough? Have I, do I fit the mold here? I mean, I know I've thought that different times I've read that and it's like, oh, am I walking right? Am I doing the right thing? You know, maybe I'll get Rob to pray for me instead because he's walking righteous. You know, we can see other people as righteous, but the, the problem is we see our inside sometimes, you know. So what makes a person righteous? Am I righteous so that I can pray and it avails much? Did you know that you will never be more righteous than you were or are when you are born again? You're as righteous as you're going to get. Righteousness is right standing with God. So when you come into the newborn experience, he removes it. He takes away the old nature, puts in the new. We are the inner man is born again. And we become new, right? And it says that we are we become righteous. The, the enemy tries to keep us under condemnation because from that position, if we don't feel like we're righteous, if we don't feel like we fit the bill for this, it's easy for the enemy to come and to knock, at, knock on the door and, and we kind of agree with him. You know, yeah, well, maybe I'm not. No, I'm not. I, the Bible says I'm the righteousness of God and I will be there. And we'll get to that verse a little bit later. If you, if you caught that, the righteousness of God. To put us in that category almost seems blasphemous. But that's what the Bible says. Doesn't mean we're God, doesn't mean whatever, or that we can do everything he does. It just means that we are the righteousness of God. Glory to God. I like what you said there. I, I mean, I never realized that we will not be any more righteous than when we first got saved. Yeah, because it's right standing. Right. See, we think of it as a walk. It's not our walk, it's right standing with God, and it makes us righteous because we believed. Well, we'll get to some verses with that. That if thou shalt believe, confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. They're hooked together. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, because once you get saved, you come into righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Here's the mouth again. Whoa. It's 10 minutes till 12. I'm on page three of six. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Romans 5, 17. For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. So what is the highlighted letters there, that words there? Gift of righteousness. So it's not something you earn. Your grace or your, your, your forgiveness is not something you earn. It is a gift. And righteousness, right standing with God, is a gift from heaven. So when you read that verse in James, he says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, are you saved? Then you're a righteous man. Your prayers avail much. Don't let the enemy try to tell you you're not righteous or you're not good enough to, to fit that verse. The Bible says you are. 
because you have believed and have confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior, believe you raised from the dead. And he says that we receive the gift of righteousness. You're now in, back in right standing. You're back to where Adam and Eve were before they fell. Does that make sense? Yes. We're now talking again with God. We, the the Wi-Fi is turned on and we have a two-way way. Jeremiah 33, 3, call upon the Lord and he will answer. Hallelujah. Now, the way that I think, usually when I look at that word righteous before was, I always think of my walk, that it's how I walk. I, I confuse righteousness with holy living. See, my, we are to walk righteously as we would think of righteously, but it, we, and we are to walk in right standing, but we are to live a holy life. So it's not like I'm trying to say we can come in and live however, we're going to be righteous regardless. No, because there's still sin. Sorry to tell you, the law is still here. Because if you take the churches, really pull a, what do they call it, what they did in Washington, D.C., a coup? The church has got rid of the law. Paul said that if without the law, there is no sin. So we get rid of the law, there's no sin, so we can do whatever we want. I saw some, uh, this is really a rabbit trail, and I don't have time for this, but I'm going there anyway. And I wish I could have found it on, find it again, but I couldn't, I couldn't see it again. But it's like, in, uh, it had to be in Europe, because the, the guy was speaking in high English, whatever. So they had on the church steps all the way up to the front door, they had the colors of the rainbow minus one. You know what I'm talking about. All the way up to the front door. So, so uh, you know, I'd like to think that that's because they think that those people might come and then they can get saved and be delivered. But that's not where this was going. But he came up and he asked, he asked her, says, what are you doing? Doing. I mean, he must have, there was a guy down here, and there's a lady up here, and I figured the guy probably didn't do it to talk to him. So she, he, she, but this gal up here was willing to talk. And he says, what are you doing? And she goes, oh, we just want everybody to know that we love them. And he said, lady, do you know the Bible? She says, yes, it says we are to love. And, and he goes, did you know that this is an abomination to God? Oh, no. He says, he, all he says is we are to love. And it's, like, and it's like, she was serious. She had a smile on her face and just nice. You, you know, the, something rises up inside of you where you're just like, a little bit of that outward man coming up again, which it's not supposed to be there. But, it, but it's, like, it's like, where are you coming from? It's like, yes, God is love. But he's also a God that says that he will, he will bring vengeance. He will avenge. He will. I mean, there's. I mean, he he talked more about hell than anybody else. As far as you know, I mean, there's there is love. Of course, there's love. I mean, he is love. How can you be more loving loving than if you are love? But love also brings correction. Without correction, there's no love there. I mean, if you just let your kids do everything and anything you want, that that's not love. You want to bring them and hone them and send them out there as men and women of the Most High God. That was a nice rabbit trail, but I was thinking if I could find it, I would have loved to play it because it was just uh, it reminded me of the lady that I was on the airplane with one time, and she was uh, she was far out there. But it's like she just talked so lovingly, and you know, and I was getting riled up, you know, and it's like, it, and it hit me. It's like, why is that? Why does she seem like she can speak so lovingly and all this stuff? And I know what she's saying is absolutely wrong. It was like some inside of me was like, but they're just not there. <laughs> Anyhow. Hallelujah. Where was I before I so rudely interrupted myself? But if a good moral life is all we needed, we would not need Jesus to come and pay the price for my sins and for my healing. If we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God, then, but when we repent, he restores us as if we had never sinned. And you're not on trial. 
after you ask Jesus to forgive you, you're, you're not on trial. He's not going to ask you now you have to prove yourself. You know, when I was growing up in the church, uh, I heard different people, they'd get saved and I'd hear the old adults around there saying, well, we'll see how long that lasts. What mighty men of faith. You know, and, and I was a kid. So remember, we talk about what our mouth says. Why, as a kid, I can't remember any message that was ever given at that church that I can remember other than the hell, fire, and brimstone ones. But, but why do I remember that? That word went out and it created something in me because words are creative. And so I can remember that. It's like, wonder how long that's going to last. And I bet you, and I know who the guy was, and I bet you when I got saved, his. I wonder how long that's going to last. It really built me up. I mean, I, he didn't say it, but I, I, I knew what, that he was thinking that when it's a relative, it's not so much fun either. Anyway, so he doesn't just say, yes, I forgive you, and now you prove yourself. You are as clean as you were when you got born again. When, you, when he comes and saves you and wipes out everything in the past. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. Here's what I said earlier. The Bible says we are the righteousness of God in Yeshua. And when I read that, it's like I'm going, you got to be kidding me. I mean, I, I, <laughs> there's something that doesn't seem right with that, but it is right. We were made, in other words, I remember a few weeks ago when I, was, when I taught upon how he made us, he created us in his image and in his likeness. He made us in his image and in his likeness. And I believe that's probably where Paul got this. We might be made the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus is what he's saying. Hallelujah. Does that not increase our faith? You're hearing the word, you're receiving it, and it's building you up. That's how, that's how you get faith. You don't go, oh, God, I need more faith. Please give me faith. I'll take faith now. I'm in a double portion. No, you're going against what the word says. The word says you would get your faith by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When you read the word, when you read, you can take it to the bank. You, it's, it's yours. <clears throat> It's yours. And the enemy's job is to take it away from you so that you can't walk in his blessings. But if we understand by the word, he's already defeated. He has no hold on us. He tries to bring things us on us. We, our faith level has to rise up and say, no, you're already defeated, you little skunk. Just get out of here. Right? He's all, he, all he does is come, he's come to maim, steal, kill, destroy. That's not a godly principle. <laughs> that's not a godly, that's not, he said, I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. Why? By his stripes, you were healed. By his dying on the cross through the blood, we're, we're saved, we're born again. He brought us blessings, abundant blessings. He wants us to walk in abundance. Why does he want us to walk in abundance? Because he loves us. You are in him. You are his righteousness. So we shouldn't be fighting with things other than for my faith to believe what the word of God says that I am and I walk in that. Hallelujah. Bam on the devil. And I said, bam, not the other word. Bam on the devil, right? I don't want people to go out there and say the words that he's saying is not. But in Christ, I became a new creation. In him, I became the righteousness of God. That's what the Bible says. Just read it to you. So how does one become righteous? Since he believes unto righteousness, because he believes on him who is our righteousness, Romans 10.10, 10, Yeshua, the Messiah. 
You are righteous and your prayers avail much. You believe what the Bible says. You are whole. You are shalom. Nothing missing, nothing lacking, total wholeness. That's where he wants us walking in. That's what he paid the price for us to walk in. That's why our faith fight is with faith, not with everything out there. Our fight is to have the good fight of faith. Hallelujah. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace. Have you received abundance of grace? If you're saved, you received abundance of grace, whether you're going to admit it or not. Much more than which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. That's not talking about when we get to heaven. When we all get to heaven, what a glorious time of rejoicing it will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. No, it's talking about here in this life, right? He says, the gift of righteousness shall reign in life. We, we will reign in that. We will walk in righteousness while we're here on the earth also. Right standing with God. We have to know that we are right standing with God to receive the thing that God has already bought for you. He's paid the price for you. He's died for you so that you can walk in wholeness. Praise God. By understanding who we are, what he has made us, and what our benefits are as we serve the King, Jehovah. Hallelujah. Remember, we are in Christ, and through him we are made the righteousness of God. Why did he do it? Because he loved us. Because of his love. Remember, the devil's been defeated. He's not going to do anything that you don't let him. Hebrews 3, it says, And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not. So we see that they come, could not enter in because of unbelief. This was the last part of the Hebrews 3, the last two verses. And then the next verse says, Let us therefore, why does he say therefore? Because they didn't enter into the rest because they didn't believe. They didn't have faith. They didn't walk in that. So therefore, fear, lest they promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. He's talking to Christians. <clears throat> and I want all the promises that have been paid for for me. I want to walk in that. He says, therefore, fear, lest they promise being left as a, as of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. See, we want to fight, but we want to fight the wrong battle. We want to go out and take somebody apart. Show him where he's wrong. You know, we want to go there, but we're, we're supposed to enter into his rest and let him fight our battles. I would also like to look at that verse as a promise in the Bible to us. We don't enter in because of unbelief or lack of faith. So we want to enter in to the rest. And I believe in that rest is shalom, it's wholeness. It's, it's you know, nothing missing, nothing lacking. He wants us to, there. That's what he paid for us to be in. Hebrews 4.2, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith and in them that heard it. So we can read all about the promises in the Bible. We can say, oh, isn't God good? Isn't he? He's got this and that for us and all these kinds of things, but we don't walk in it. Why? Because we're not believing it, which is what he said. The word preached, the word that was given to them in the wilderness didn't do them any good because they didn't believe it. So I can say I believe in all these, everything in here, but a lot of the, the church, and I don't mean to pick on the church or anything, but it's a lot of the church that doesn't believe the Old Testament and they don't believe the, the gifts of the Spirit. They don't, you know, they take this and that out, but I want, I want it all. I want it all. 
I want to fight with everything that we got to, for my faith level to be where it's supposed to be. And so we can have the we can have the the promises in the Bible in the Word, but if we if our faith doesn't come up to receive them, we don't receive them. They're not automatic. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if thou shalt enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. We need to understand that everything that he did for us was finished before the foundation of the world. Now that's hard to grasp because we live in a time frame where he was in the beginning and he was in the end and he was in the middle and he's seen everything from the front. So he says that everything that has been uh, promised or all, all was finished from the foundation of the world. You were known back then before all the rest of the stuff came along. So we, we can't fathom a God like that. He's, he is the I am. He is, he is everywhere has always been. Fight the good fight of faith. All the works were already finished. He wants us to walk in them. The fight. Satan is already defeated. You don't really have to fight him. It's this here. The faith is fight. I stand in righteousness. I got to believe that. I stand in righteousness. Why? Because he's taken all the sins away from me. That meets me in right standing with God. By his stripes I have been healed, according to Peter. He says, by his stripes, I have been healed, or I were healed, which means that it's a past thing. It's already done. What we have to do is claim what's already been done for us and work in that. It's been finished. Jesus said that I can have what I say. The thoughts that I have against the word that come into this little brain up here that causes problems is what we need to cast down immediately casting down all, all things that come against the knowledge of God. Anything that doesn't line up with the word of God, you cast it down. Yes. You get rid of it. That's, that's part of the faith. You just stand up. You have the right to get rid of it. He's already defeated. Leave me alone. You're already defeated. We believe the word of faith. Remember what it says in Mark 11? We have the God kind of faith. What did God do? How he, did he create things? He spoke them into existence. Our words are creative. His words were creative. Now he's, see, I want to say he's way up here and we're down here, which we are, but yet he says that we're standing in the righteousness of God. And we're also not to think of ourselves more highly than we ought to. For he that entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works, as God did from his. So have you entered into the rest, his rest, or are you still trying to work the works? Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. In other words, I want all the things that I've got coming to me. Faith is in God means to rest in him. Faith is simply believing his word. Faith is acting on his word as if you believe it, because you do. Faith is simply believing God as a child and taking the word of God at the, as to what it says and standing on that. And in closing, a couple of verses. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say and shall not doubt in his heart. I took the mountain out because that gets us messed up here. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. That's radical. That's Yeshua saying this. Romans 8, 37, he says, Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. You are more than a conqueror. Yes. You are more than a conqueror. Why? Because you're in right standing with God. You're in fellowship with God and you're walking according to the word and you're believing what the word says and you, you receive the benefits that he's paid the price for already for us because he loves us. He wants us in that place. He's not, he's not holding us back. He's saying, come on, come on. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Romans 8, 30, or John 16, 33. This is Yeshua. These things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. 
In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. We are in him, he has overcome the world. So we don't have to overcome the world. I have to come, I have to overcome my outer man, but my inner man rule and reign. Hallelujah. This is awesome. In the world, he has overcome it already. We are in him. First John 5, 4, last verse. Tom said I plagiarized, plagiarized the Bible quite a bit. First John 5, 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Are you, are you born of God? Yes. You are overcoming the world. The Bible says you're an overcomer. You're overcoming the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith, which is what I've preached on the last five weeks, which even our, our faith is what over. It's not how often you go out and you hit the devil and knock him over and do this and how many people you win for the Lord, even though that's all good and, and all this stuff, but it's our faith that what overcomes this world that we live in now is my faith where I stand in. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. That means he wants us to believe what he has said we are and walk in who we are. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We're cranked up today. If anybody needs healing, needs uh, deliverance, needs anything, uh, come up here and Elena will lay her hands on you and you shall be completely set free and healed and delivered and, and uh, lay on the floor for an hour and a half while God re redoes your body. Hallelujah. Amen. No, I mean, I want to be serious. If there's anything that you feel is holding you back or or that god has brought to your you know you need to really take care of this thing i've given you all the scriptures he wants you in right standing he doesn't want the enemy to have any weight on you whatsoever he wants you to be free to hear him when he speaks and to do what he says to do but it's not your fight he's he's doing the fight in us my fight is that i have faith that i can receive and walk in all the blessings that he has here for me why would why would he provide all the blessings and say all these things whether it's in the old testament new Testament, you go into the old testament it's amazing how much he has to say about about against uh, that he's our healer and that he wants to, us to walk in health he doesn't want our our uh, crops to fail he wants us to walk in blessing he's going to send the rain he's going to do all these things if we walk after him and we're in right standing with him we should be walking in that amen and i'm not really a prosperity teacher although this message might sound like i was but i do believe that i want to prosper in the things that god has for me in this life hallelujah so if anybody needs healing or prayer father we just bless you we thank you father for your word we thank you for the things that Yeshua has paid for even before the foundation of the world. Because they saw the cross before the foundation of the world that, as if it was already done, which is why all these people in the Old Testament could come also and be saved. Hallelujah. You've thought of everything because you love your people. You have created us. You have made us in his image and in his likeness. You want us to walk that way. That you want us to be completely restored. And we just, we just honor you. We bless you. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thy kingdom come. Your will be done Amen. in this life as it is in heaven. In Yeshua's name. And I want to pray for the ones that are sick this morning. I pray for Tom and Annette. I just lift them up to you, Father God. We come, we, we stand in right standing with the Father. We line up our faith with the word of God. And you said that by his stripes, we are healed. We speak healing over Tom and Annette. Yes. and Wayne Amen. this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 
We bless you and we thank you for it. We receive it because of your love for us, because you have already made this available to us, and we want to walk in all your blessings. We want to walk in all the things that you have paid the price for already. So we're not asking you to do something that you need to do now. We just receive what you've done 2,000 years ago even, before the foundations even. So we just receive it. We thank you for the manifestation, and we receive that manifestation of healing in Jesus' name. We also lift up uh, Tammy again to you, Father. We just thank you for the healing, the good word that's coming from there, Father. We just thank you, Lord. We just ask that you would bless her, bless her and Fred and, and their children, Father. We just lift them up to you, and we just ask that you would pour out your blessings, your spirit upon them. Lead them, guide them, direct them. Thank you, Father. And we also pray for uh, for Debbie Forrest's yes. grandson that, that was killed in a truck accident. Father, we just lift her up to you and that family, Lord. We just, we just ask, I mean, we know where this comes from. We know who's behind it. But Father, we ask, Lord God, that, that uh, people from, from the kingdom of this world would be transferred over into the kingdom of light through this whole thing. That what the enemy means for bad, which it is bad, that God can turn it around for good, that many more lives in the kingdom of heaven. So we just pray, Lord, your comfort over them, wrap your arms around them. In Yeshua's name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Be blessed. Everybody out on Zoom, be blessed. Um, hallelujah. And if you need healing, just reach out and receive it. It's yours. It's been paid for already. Hallelujah. Hmm? Oh, that's right. My wife's birthday's today. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ruth. Happy birthday to you. She's 27 today. She's dyslexic. <laughs> I have that too. <laughs> no, no, she, no, she's not dyslexic. I won't create anything over her in Jesus' name. She's a child of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Walking in perfect health. I have no idea. All I've all I've got is what came through the prayer chain, the prayer line. No, it might have been a little early. What was it? Friday morning. I know she does, but I don't know where her grandson lives. That's where he lives too. Okay. Praise the Lord. Was he in an accident over here on Forty Two or somewhere? Yeah, okay. Amen. Thank you, Father.